Hey guys, welcome. I hope you enjoyed your week one visual literacy module. Wanted to point out some really awesome things you guys said about the visual elements within the photograph. Light and shadow, value, focus, space, shape, line, color or tonality, and texture. Mallory said the focus of the photo is the woman and the child. Even though the photo is in black and white, the darkness of the ocean, or the dark tones, make the woman and child stand out against the light tones of the sky, creating different values in the photograph. Excellent. Stephanie comments on the way the people in the picture are positioned, gives the impression that they are in shallow waters, but at the same time seems like they're in a deep ocean, which is a great observation because the image is low contrast and there's not a great definition between the lights and darks, and it does make the space a little ambiguous. Sarah comments that the sea looks further, oh, excuse me, with the sea further from point of view being lighter and almost blending in with the sky. So here, along the horizon line, it, it is almost the same tonal value as the water. Devin comments, with this image, there is an asymmetrical balance that draws a focus to the woman and child. So they're almost dead center. If you were to draw a line here and a line here, they would almost be exactly in the center. But this guy over here kind of upsets it and creates an asymmetrical balance. Also, it moves your eye around the image to the focal point or this area of black and back to this little area of white, which probably is uh, swim shorts. So you have this triangle of movement, which keeps the photograph from being very static. Chloe says, it has consistent texture with the water's ripples and cloudy skies, giving me an overall sense of melancholy. Skylar says that while the photo is very simplistic, the man on the left upsets the feeling of the balanced photo and creates movement with your eye. She does. Jacob says, the focus on the woman and the child at the center gives it a depth that makes the subject seem small in comparison to the vast ocean around him. And this is something you can see in Harry Callahan's other photographs of his wife and daughter, Barbara and Eleanor. Um, give it a search and you'll see that he very often places them almost in center with this gigantic cityscapes or landscape behind them. And scale, them being reduced to such a small scale, but very strong shapes, keeps them, the emphasis and the focal point, and they don't get overwhelmed by the uh, additional pictorial space. Kayan says, such is the fact that the ocean and sky both take up approximately the same amount to the photo, which is true. It's almost split right in the center. Anna says, you can see that the photograph was taken in natural light, letting the sunlight hit the woman and child to create the different tonality in the photo. Excellent. Sierra comments on the nice depth of the field. And depth of field is a term that is um, associated with aperture in your camera. And it means the area of focus from nearest to furthest that appears acceptably sharp. So there is a great depth of field. This guy must be several yards back and he's still in pretty good focus. Atiana mentions that the distance between the man and the mother reveals a depth of showing that he is further than her. What it reveals is the vastness of the sea touching the horizon. Laura talks about the organic shapes in contrast to the uh, linear shapes of the horizon and background. Noe says that the photo is very simple and the woman and child at the center are a common focal point, making them the subject of the photograph. Excellent job. And Melinda says the dark color in her swimsuit contrasts with the ocean and with the sky. So we'll finish here with Jordan. And he talks about how the photo shifts tones from light to dark in an asymmetrical balance as you go left to right. The lighter spots on the left appear almost more out of focus than the ones on the right. The upper right side gives a deep sense of space. Right here. So I am really impressed by everyone's feedback, and this is just a little highlight of some of the awesome comments that you guys have written. So thank you very much for that. And just a little pre preview into what we will be talking about next week. It loads with the fastest Wi-Fi. We will be talking about visual literacy.
part two. And we will be looking um, at the photo, same photograph using different terms. The angle, such as what the vantage point is. Um, are they, was the photographer high up? Was he low down? Framing, I want you to look at the edges of the photograph and talk about how the edges include or exclude information. Dominance, when you close your eyes and then open them again, what's the first thing you notice about the photograph? Consider photographs are made up in a way of hierarchical hierarchical elements. That's a tough one. Um, where one thing is more important than the other. And if a good photograph will have areas where you, you can almost go one, two, three, four, five. And that's the order of things that are important. You don't want two like number ones in the same photograph because the viewer won't know where to focus or put the emphasis um, in the image. Contrast, are there strong, strong contrast, such as lights and darks, textures, solids and voice, positive and negatives. Repetition, uh, repetition of visual elements can create unity, right? How are elements repeated to create a pattern? Variety often creates interest. Can you see a variety of elements in this photograph, such as values, shapes, textures? And balance, which you guys have already started to work on, is the visual weight on one side of the photograph about the same as the other? So. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say about this and we've got two more weeks of working with this uh, Callahan photograph and then we go into some Walker Evans and probably some Ouija. So thanks for all your hard work.